Another step will be to remove the seven screws holding the cover plate on the Elma. With all of the screws removed, you can now gain access to the internals for the Elma. Use an 11 30 second socket to remove the four nuts holding the, the board into place. With the four screws off, you can now unplug the motor from the con from control board and remove the control board. To remove the motor, you will first need to remove the duo dial and the cover and then loosen up the belt inside to be able to access the shaft on the motor so that you may remove it. We'll start by taking the bolts off, the cover, and the dial. Using an eighth inch Allen head, loosen the two screws that are on the handle, and then you can remove the handle. Place that aside so you'll have it for later. Again, using the one eighth inch Allen head, loosen the nut, or the, the screw that is holding the duo dial on, and then you should be able to remove that. Set that aside for later use. Note the pin. You are now ready to remove the cover. cover. Use your Phillips head to remove the two screws holding the cover in place. Note that there are sleeves that cover the threads on the inside of this cover plate. So when you remove the cover, those components will fall through. And you will have to gather them up later so that you can put them back on prior to reassembly. Next, you want to relieve the pressure on the belt so that you can remove it. To do that, you're going to remove this spacer and then using, again, the 1 8 Allen head, you can loosen this up and slide this off, removing the belt. And so you, now you are ready to remove the motor. Next, Using a one quarter inch wrench, we are going to remove the five standoffs which are holding the motor and capacitor in place. With the standoffs removed you, are, you removed, you are now free to remove the motor and the capacitor from the pump. We are now ready to reassemble the Elma, putting the new motor and capacitor onto the pump. And place this in position. Watch for the gearing. And the capacitor. And secure. With the motor and capacitor back in place and tightened down, now ready to reinstall your new board in place and put the four screws back in and then plug in your connections. With all of your nuts tightened back down firmly and your board back in place, you're now ready to reconnect all of your connections. Okay. And that would complete the front half of this of this rebuild. Okay, the next step is to replace the timing gear and belt. So we're going to slide that on. We're going to slide the belt on. And we will align those, making sure that the alignment markings that we made earlier are still in the right place. We'll take our Allen head and we'll tighten. the tensioner back on so that we will be able to keep tension on that timing belt and keep it in place. Make sure it's run smoothly. Okay, and we're good to go. Okay, the final step on the back. Next we're going to 
put the cover back on. As I said, you have these components which will have to go back on very carefully. We will want to take the screw and put it through the hole and then hold it in place. Take the sleeves over the screws, place the washer on. Then very carefully, you're going to want to place that up against the pump and refasten it. Okay. All right. Once the cover is on, tighten down the two screws so that it's firmly placed. Take your dual dial. You're installing it. Make sure that the Key fits into the hole in the back, like I noted earlier. And that dial is at zero. Then we're going to tighten that down. There we go. That's tight. And we'll do the same with this, tightening down the two Allen head screws. With those screws finally tightened up, you should be all back together. And ready to do the installed power and start running tests with on your uh, on your Alma. The final thing that we will do is replace the cover on our Alma and tighten down the screws. And we'll be ready to go.